Okay, hi, this is February 7th, 2017. This is Lupus model number 1,483. But this really does explain everything. So it starts out with a question. Actually, I was thinking of all our past work related to, uh, to B cells that come into the marginal zone. We already showed, I'll just start with this. B cells come into the marginal zone, and when they get there, the marginal zone may be inflammatory or not. Inflammatory because the ACs, the PDCs is interfere on there, and maybe no marginal zone, macrophages to tolerate. So it's all this interaction. We always knew that B cells could wander into this environment and, go, and become bad. But the problem is, what's first? How does the environment go bad to begin with? So the basic question was I, I was thinking is that in the same mass, we have some evidence that if you have no endogenous interferon beta, but normal levels are even BD2, that the BD2, you know, higher endogenous interferon beta, this is in the same environment, higher endogenous interferon beta leads to a, a B cell that might tend to survive and become out of reactive. I think there's a lot of reactivity that's higher in the, in the BD2 B cell versus it's very low in the, in the interferon beta knockout B cell. So this is bone marrow transfer in the same mass. So this brings up the question, <coughs> there is increased constitutive interferon beta as the main cause of lupus, and that is already in the B cell, and those T1 B cells that come out of the bone marrow. So that being the case, we get to the following model. I mean, it's not here, but you know, that we know now, okay, now they have interferon beta, maybe none, not usually, but either low, medium, or high, or, or, but it's always low. But without the constitutive interferon beta, nothing will happen. They'll even stay as a pre-T1, I think it's not here either, but they'll even stay at the pre-T1 stage, won't even develop to the T1 stage. So this, in, this constitutive interferon beta, and even the level of it, term is necessary for them to develop. And it's necessary for TLR7 or TLR9 signal, or IRF, IRF signaling, because if you don't have that beta, we already we know the beta knockout, they can't signal even to TLR7. So it's not like, you know, as I keep saying, it, it's not like interferon, it's not like TLR7 promotes interferon beta or alpha, it's the other way around. So so it's it's still the fundamental thing that has come out at the very beginning, that the endogenous interferon beta enables everything. Now, here's what happens. In a normal mouse, you have relatively low levels of endogenous interferon beta. Or maybe I should go over here. In a, in a normal mouse, or in any mouse, there's always some percolation going on in the, in the marginal zone. It could be, uh, you know, PDC is producing a little interferon, which also may be out if the interferon beta is consistently elevated. It's not just in B cells, but it's in every cell. We showed that in humans. So PDCs probably have a little higher interferon beta, right? We got that in humans, even in T cells. So consistent interferon beta can be low or high in every cell. So it's a little higher or lower here. And then you get ACs, you know, they, it, it does the same thing. We already showed this in uh, many papers, is it, it's a combination of PDC, PDCs, uh, you know, they interact with, they're down here, with, they interact with apatitic cells, um, they can produce interferon alpha. Also, marginal macrophage apex removes, uh, removes the ability to clear apatitic cells, so you get more apatitic cells. Everything leads to, one thing leads to another, you get a very inflammatory environment out here. The apatitic cells we already showed can go inside the B cells, you know, they get taken out by the B cells, and this is in, T2, in T2MZPs. And then when they do that, they uh, upregulate, you know, CD69 down to the S1P. And CD68 goes up across to MAC, and they undergo flicker translocation to the follicle. So all that, all that can occur if all that does occur even in normals, but not in a very big way, you know, it's like a cell or two here and there. <clears throat> so it's regional because of that effect. But it's also uh, popula population shift because of what I showed here, is in the readout, if you did a readout of T1, uh, the rate, the number of T1s that are tolerogenic versus immunogenic, you get more tolerogenic ones in the, in the uh, more tolerogenic ones here, and the B6, this right here, no, this, this is B6, more tolerogenic ones, and fewer immunogenic ones in the, in the B6. But, um, and anyway, BD2 is the other way around. Interferon beta knockout, really almost no 
immunogenic lens, all tolerogenic lens. And we know what that means. That means uh, that means right here that they have high the tolerogenic lens have starting from the beginning. You know, we'll get to the mechanism of box P3 and IL10, and you know, maybe maybe inside there there's less activation of IRF3, seven, or we talked about the IRF3 or nine, or maybe seven. So all these things are properties of the of the B cell being tolerogenic. So, so aim one. What's aim one? Aim one is first experiment one is to look at the to show that this constituent interferon beta is the beginning and then it's amplified. So, so the so the intrinsic feature is the level of endogenous or constituent interferon beta. You know, and if you have high interferon beta, by the way, you might be better off to, to protect yourself against viruses and infections. But though is your sort of you know, like that. You know, we're all a little different. Okay, so you go from there to the environment, which is the environment then has, can, can uh, make interferon. By the way, this predicts that interferon from the environment will amplify this. Or PDCs uh, could uh, make interferon. Or ACs could stimulate themselves. You know, so you've got this amplification loop, which we know about. You know, once you have a little interferon beta, you can stimulate cell and make more beta and more alpha and you got the you got the you know you even got the endogenous feedback loop here but so should have got all the IRFs going. Okay so experiment one forget about the environment. Make the environment the same and put in the bone marrow triple transfer B6 B2 and bone marrow knockout B6 uh, or I should say interferon beta knockout B6 and show that in the same environment you get this kind of heterogeneity. You could show it by a single cell or you can just show it if you, you we, we don't have the reporters on all the other cells, but you know, in the B6 at least, you can show that Fox P3 and IL10 reporter mice have the right properties in, the, in this environment. It's but I think, the interferon reporter mice too, interferon, interferon beta. Oh, right. Reporter. All those mice, the three kinds of reporter mice that, will, that we can use to do this. Um, right. So, but it's always in B6. So we, so that's experiment two actually here. Uh, no, it's, it's it's actually here. It's actually one B. Experiment two. Let me go to experiment two. Experiment two is to do this individually in B6 and B2 mice, and to show uh, you try to convert one mouse to the other. If this is right, <coughs> you can say, okay, let's say now we've studied. The intrinsic effects. Now let's study the environmental effects. So we convert a, a BD2 to a B6, I mean a B6 to BD2 by giving it apoptotic cells, calling it liposome to remove it, you know, remove the remove the MZNs and so forth. Try and then and then we uh, see if this shift occurs here or this way. Like that, that, that this we can do in B6. This marker is because we got the interim. Beta reporter, Fox B3, uh, ILT. Uh, it's hard to do, use all those reports in B2, but the thing is, again, here, uh, to convert a B2 to B6, we just use the interferon alpha receptor knockout B2. You know, that kind of thing. We show, you know, that's that was the, that's the feedback loop here. That's the interferon receptor right there at the end of the arrow. And if that's not there, then, you, then you'll be shifted down here to ILT and Fox B3. So that's like experiment one and two readouts or Reporter mice, if possible, in single cell analysis, even though some of you might say we don't need single cell analysis. Um, okay, that's that's 1A. 1B is specific manipulations of the environment. And here I'm thinking, you know, okay, is it interferon beta or is it interferon alpha or interferon alpha or something? So we can, we can block or add interferon beta. Uh, we could do it to this triple chimeric or we could do it to B6, B2, this thing here. See, this, this first manipulation, experiment two here, is, is sort of like what happens in real autoimmune disease. But we don't, but we don't know which interferon beta receptor or even which I, TLR is active here. So you go over here, you do specific manipulations of interferon beta, alpha, or which receptor, uh, which we can do with uh, interferon receptor block A. Or you can do specific TLR 7 and 9 manipulations. And you want to do TLR IRF3, you can might, might do something different. But, here you give an ACs, you know, and look at TLR seven and nine, or you can get more specific and give them CL two six four or CPG, 
to get hit seven and nine specifically. Then of course you can do a hit list. And uh, I guess when what A1C is now using Pacific reporter nights, and like this may be disappear, maybe a separate A, maybe a sword. But here you can see if you do Fox P3, you just plot Fox P3, under you can see under conditions of tolerogenic T1s, you get uh, that's over here, you get more Fox P more Fox P3. I don't know why it is this right? B6, this B2. Okay. More Fox more Fox P3 in the B6 versus B2, it's this way. So this way, reporter, or this, they all say the same thing. So that's uh, that's A1 based on this. Endogenous you know, or intrinsic, and then environment. How, what's the relative amount, and, and what are the factors? N2 is the mechanism. And the mechanism is, you know, I guess we know what happens right after you signal the interferon receptor. The, the next step or that amplifies that, and all the other interferons, is I or X. We got a lot of information. In this. Maybe it's IRF7, maybe it's IRF3 and 9, but we'll look at that, we'll look at those IRFs uh, in, under these conditions, you know, under the conditions described above, we have to pick the right one. That, that's, a, that's a mechanism, but specifically, some of those mechanisms, I don't remember these down here, but some of those mechanisms promote Fox P3 or this Fox 01, you know, but this has all been worked out. That this Fox 01, Fox P3, uh, and then finally IL10, and TGF beta, I guess the TGF beta, and then IL2. No, no, it's fine to agree, and then IL2. So this, we already have a model for that, you know, the mechanism of how, of how uh, and, oh, and the, IR, the interferon alpha or beta signaling promotes one way or the other, promotes tolerogenic versus immunogenic. So that's a mechanism based on, you know, those signaling pathways. The other mechanism is kind of here or up here. We have a lot of data on anti how anti-IL-20 uh, bone marrow B cell depletion repopulation leads to a top, leads to an inflammatory environment. I guess that's this way, this inflammatory environment. And so uh, the prediction is that if you reduce the inflammatory environment, you'll shift these populations from the immunogenic to the tolerogenic. You know, either by single cell or by reporters. Uh, yeah, right. So this would be the population of these B6 mass we've been using quarters. All right, do bone marrow transfer. I think we did. I think we even have some data on that. And uh, in any event, uh, to show that it's interferon beta or maybe interferon alpha dependent, you can block beta or alpha. We did that already. Blocking beta makes the population occur better. Or you could, you could, as you know, it's done in a, it's done in red mouse. So uh, marginal macrophages, those guys, are not there. So, so you know, but you put lymphotoxin beta to, to maintain and restore margins on macrophages. This is the lymphotoxin beta agonistic antibody, and uh, supposedly that'll recreate a tolerogenic environment. Again, the readouts are, are here. So I guess it's I guess it's sort of like, in summary, you know, the initial thing it's constituent interferon beta being slightly higher or lower, and we even have a case where it's not. And that's endogenous events in the B cell that happens right there can be tracked back to the pre even T1 or T1 stage. And that sort of sets up the events that occur later. <clears throat> and then and then you move into, okay, what events what happens next is the environment is here. And something has to trigger it like a virus or something to get the pro you know, high interfere beta to, to go to to go to the pro-inflammatory thing and get this positive feedback loop, but then you get the environment kicking in. Uh, and that's a that's the second step. And that is a combination of uh, apoptotic cells, simulating PDCs, how much interferon did they make? And by the way, like I said, I would predict the PDCs in an autoimmune person can predict, have a considerably higher interferon. But going back to the data, the interferon in humans, the interferon is high in all cells. It's sort of so that's there, and then and then you got there. You got marginal macrophages that can be tolerogenic or not, and then all those and, and can absorb apoptotic cells in a tolerogenic way. Actually, IL10 plays a role in it too. So, so, so that's that's what it is. It's what initiates the um, endogenous beta and intrinsic effects, 
versus you know the what happens in a dip, in in an environment and then how does that all amplify? What's the mechanisms underlying all that? So I think I think that's it.